All right, everyone, welcome back. JP the third with you from Viv now. Playing through the rain. Kind of a set of chapter last time, more or less dealing with the security situation. We'll be diving a little bit more into the economic situation today. I don't know how long this particular chapter is going to be. We have three big points that we'll have to clear. I want to just make sure that the briefings are all clear on the board before we hit the papers. Okay, I think we're good. So, just quick overview of what we got to do before we get started. We have to uh, finalize the L1 railway, the contract. Now, if you notice this briefing here, local police working with nationalists, that is something that's going to influence our de uh, a decision very soon. There are, it makes sense because they're a nationalist organization and the communists in the government or the hard left in the government, whatever, um, both ends of that are happy to work with the red youth, the red uh, swords as well. I'm not the red swords, the red youth. The young swords and the red youth. It's going to be very important if we want to get anything done at all to get these elements under control and to clear out people in the government and in our security forces that are knowingly supporting violent actions. Now, I mean, let's read this report right quick. One of our agents acted as a Young Swords member, had acting as a Young Swords member, had an encounter with two members of the local police force in Enrica, Austin Ballar and Vic Nizzi. According to the report, the policeman tried to bribe the agent to burn down a store that belongs to a known Communist Party member and to investigate further violence. We have detained the policeman on charges of corruption. This goes to Nia Morgan's uh, point that corruption is one of the biggest problems in our country right now. And that it goes this deep means that we just can't focus on these groups. We have to clear we have to clear out the entire snake pit. There's no other way to do it. There's supporting freedom of speech, but if you're actively looking for opportunities to fund violence and political terrorism, that cannot be okay. And I'm, that's me warming up to a decision I'll be making that I know is coming. Situation report from Narbel. Situation on the board is getting worse. Lonsburg Southern Army was at a training close to our borders and did not respond after we issued a radio message. So we're going to have to keep our eye on Lonsburg. They are not letting up, letting up on us. Protest Crescent. Kybner suggests expanding executive powers. <laughs> of course. Of course the Nazis are like, you know what we need? Dictatorship. That's what we need. Leader of NFP, Kazara Kibner, has suggested that the new constitution should expand executive powers, adding fuel to the debate over the possibility of reforming the 1929 constitution, points out the current diet situation in Switzerland, and emphasize the need for strong leadership. The current constitution suggests the division of executive power between the cabinet and the president who has no immunity before the courts for acts of treason or unconstitutional behavior during office. In the system suggested by the NFP, the president would have absolute immunity before the courts and it is the president who would chair the cabinet. It's not clear yet whether this suggestion would spark further debate. <laughs> of course it would. Basically, they're basically saying the president should be allowed to do whatever they want, which I can already tell you is no go. But again, that also kind of feeds into what I was saying at the beginning where the vice president functions more as a prime minister than a vice president because the vice president chairs the cabinet. Open news here. This is gang violence, gang violence. Reform demands gain popularity. Demands for reform are gaining more popularity than ever. Than ever. Latest public opinion reports show that the majority of the sort of people want changes in the government structures that were established after Tarkin saw military coup in 1929. Public trust in the Grand National Assembly and the Supreme Court is at an all-time low. Yeah. So yeah, like, we're definitely, reform is on the table. And that's going to lead to a lot of our decision-making. Workers' Party Solidarity March, the... The left is consolidating, or reorganizing, I guess you could say, in sort. Now, that's out of news. So we got the L1 highway uh, railway contract. We got the meeting with Karanti. 
we got some legislation that we will have to get to. Or an internal executive plan from, for economic relief. Y'all are going to like me in a minute, but first we're going to start here. Let's go to Enrica. We arrived in Enrica by train. After being, being greeted by cheerful citizens and local government officials, we headed to the, to the city hall. Here a significant meeting about the L1 project would take place. Several construction companies sent their representatives to the city hall. Gus arrived earlier with a heartwarming smile. Hello, Mr. President. Good to see you again. Appreciate you taking up my offer on the stock investment. Armadine is a very promising corporation, and if everything goes well, you will make solid returns. <laughs> Thank you for arranging the opportunity. I'll get you a 25-year-old Ellery Maroon if this makes solid if they make solid profits. <laughs> my pleasure, Mr. President. I'll be looking forward to that maroon because it is guaranteed. Simon Hall joined us, and after settling down, we moved on to discuss the, the details of the L1 railway project. As you can see, Lilius didn't get her way, so she's not here. Don't look too deeply into that. Surely that's not a sign of things to come. I came with, I came with the train yesterday. It was a little uncomfortable. Besides starting our economic recovery, the train journeys here will be much more pleasant, Mr. President. And that's a given now. This project will improve so many things ranging from logistics to growth. You made the right choice for sure. This is just us leaning one way or the other. I trust your economic plan, Simon. I'm glad to hear that. We should be able to slow, slow down the recession if we finish this project successfully. I'm sure we will. According to your document, many citizens will be employed because of business expansions. What kind of end results do we expect? Short-term employment and long-term economic development in the Gelsen and Greater Horsold regions. There are many forgotten people living in between the developed cities of Lachlan and Horsold. They will benefit. Simon searched for the documents he was holding and found the one he was looking for. I have the overview of the companies here. Simon handed up the files over to me. Look at the files. Of the files, three corporations were listed. The Sword of State Corporation, Underhaul Construction, and Taurus Holding. I viewed the list of corporations. I also wrote down some notes and ideas. Which corporation should we talk about? Start with the state, corp the state company. The respective Sword of State Corporation, also known as the SSC, was founded in 1891. It's the main state corporation tasked with running the day-to-day -day, day -day construction services of our country. This is see it's the primary reason why our infrastructure is outdated as is. We need more adapt adaptive construction companies. The disadvantage would be going against your election promise of moving away from, state dom from a state-dominated economy. This sort of state corporation lacks a modern way of thinking. They also underperform with the slow construction methods. That's top and left. Look at the abysmal regional railway system. They do have a wealth of knowledge and infrastructure. I don't share great admiration for the SSC, but their track record clearly shows completed contracts with thousands of employees who have experience. According to the preliminary calculations of the SSC, they will need more resources to finish a project this size. Now, we're going to see this a lot, but we're going to leave it alone. I like the SSC, but I want to hear about the others. I mean, tell me about Underhaul Construction. The real estate and construction giant was founded in 1925. They expanded during the economic boom of the 30s. Picking this corporation would fit our market economic policy. The CEO of Underhaul is Chris Scar, the mayor of Conrad, or Shaw. Chris Shaw. We're going Shaw. He sold half, half of his shares a few years ago, but seems very eager on the L1 bid. I had a chance to work with Underhawk Construction before in Whole Sword. They took several contracts for the Central Station renovation and excelled at it. How was your experience with them? Out of all the three, this is the company I can trust. They work hard, long and fast to accomplish their contracts. They will get this done if we give it to them. I am not so sure about trusting them with such a big contract. 
especially after the worker issues, but at least they have worked on several mega projects and always deliver on time. We need to be able to trust the corporation. This is a base requirement for the contract. I think their capabilities are very, very suitable for the L1 railway project. They worked on two infrastructure projects in Gelfund and one in Greater Holsor that were worth 2 billion rent in total. Underhaul has specifically mentioned their solid track record and highlighted that the cost of, of the project would be more than expected for a project of the scale, but finished on time. Underhaul seems interesting, but let's see the others. I only got one more. Tars Holding. Tars Holding was founded in 1946 and is owned by the entrepreneur Gerard Fais. It's an, it is a new holding company whose subsidiaries use cutting edge technology from Arcadia to reduce construction costs and prices. They are known to provide for their workers, who are part of the labor union of Thornton. They are a very interesting corporation, especially because of their innovative construction methods, but aren't suitable for large projects like these. Why shouldn't we go with Taurus? <sighs> to be frank, what was the largest mega project? What was the largest mega project they worked on? I don't even remember. Gus shook his head. Choosing this corporation is too risky for a project like this. If things go wrong, if things, excuse me, if things were to go wrong, we shouldn't put our first project at risk. There's too much at stake here. They took a joint contract in Arcadia for reconstructing the highway intersection of one of their major cities. It went well, but, it's their, but it is their only large-scale success. If we're going to try a different company, this is the most unique. The project manager from Taurus Holdings mentioned that they would be able to finish the project with the allocated funding. They are the only company who found, it, found the budget sufficient, making them a cheaper alternative. Taurus is definitely worth considering. It was time to make a decision about which country, not which country, which company to award the Elwin Highways High Speed Railway contract to. Now, you got several options here. The reality of the project that we're doing, it will come at a cost to the budget. Spoiler warning. I'm not going to say when and how, but it will. So the best thing you can do. If, especially if you're on this route and you're not going to do an autocratic takeover, is just put the money down up front. Best thing you can do. So the only real question here is between the state company or underhaul. And since we promised to go free market, we're going with underhaul. But yeah, that, whenever, that's just a basic reality of government. Never trust anybody who tells you that they can bring a project in on budget. <laughs> <laughs> Especially if they're new to the game. Like, oh yeah, no, we got this. You do, huh? Okay. Now, it's going to cost... We have two points in our budget right now. We've still got a bit of a surplus. But, we've got a budget meeting coming up. And I'm going to get into that a little bit when we get back to the capital. But for now, let's go with Underhaul. I settled on Underhaul Construction. Good thing that... Good that we're staying consistent to our economic strategy. Simon signed a certain section of the dossier and fixed his glasses. Uh, very well, Mr. President. The contract will be awarded to Underhaul Construction. <laughs> very glad that you have made this choice. I can tell from my experience that we will be very satisfied with this company. The company will be notified today, and the construction work will begin immediately after. I think we're off to a good start. My expectations for a grand opening ceremony are late, to, late next year. I will be returning to my duties. See you soon, Mr. President. Thank you. This concludes the meeting. The meeting ended and we spent the remainder of the day attending events in Anrika. It was very refreshing to attend cultural dances and hear the traditional Swedish mu music of the region. All right. So, we now have, all, our surplus is down to one. I think, yeah. Construction begins.
I'm just going to read it. Underhawk Construction has been awarded a two-year contract for an extensive infrastructure project as part of the L1 high-speed railway project in Sorlin. In addition to the ground investigation, Underhawk will be responsible for subgrade, brick, track laying, and providing the design for all civilian structures, including, a ground, retain including ground retaining walls and earthworks for the railway. See, there's a lot involved there. You don't have to know all of it, but just watch a video on City Skylines of building a road. Nothing complicated, just building a road. And you can see how complicated it gets very quickly. Unhall, is, Unhall said it could build a line at a much lower cost, according to a letter seen by The Economist. But the Interior Minister, Grav, has warned letting Unhall build L1 be extremely questionable. The L1 railway project involves the widening and upgrading of hundreds of kilometers of existing railway between Lakhavin and Holsord. A high-speed railway will pass from Enrica and Gelsord as well, as connecting the towns of Deskut, Anka, and Vectariat to the capital. So overall, this, this was the better project. And as I said, if everything goes well like it should, we'll be able to get that Agland project as well. So overall, this is the smart play. But it's just decent economic sense. You want to be able to maximize where your money's coming from. And our money's coming from this region and from our port. Speaking of good economic sense, let's look at the economic relief plan. With the assistance of the National Business Council and the Central Bank, Simon Hall put forward a countrywide relief plan to mitigate the economic hardships that are being felt. We can either provide stimulus checks for people in need or bail out businesses under serious financial strain or decide not to approve this plan. All right, so I'm going to take a little bit of a little bit of time here to explain what I'm about to do. Because especially in light of everything that's happening in real life, this kind of seems mad a little bit. But here's the reality. We are responsible for maintaining the value of the currency. I was about to say the dollar. Sorlin does not have the dollar. They have the rent. We have to maintain the value of the rent. We have to grow the economy. And we have to stay as budget neutral as possible. We have a budget meeting which we will have to do some deficit spending. So if we are not careful, it will spiral out of control very quickly. I think... I think... Because th this game has multiple, multiple bad endings. If you just been like you don't have a care in the world, you can dive into, you can plunge yourself into a depression extremely quickly. So the reality is we have to control the flow of money and we have to control the budget to the best of our ability. This means we can't do any extra spending right now, which means no stimulus checks to anybody at all. Again, it's nobody's fault. It's completely understandable. It's not going to be a popular decision at all. Not in this game. I'm going to take a popularity hit. But if our economic plan works out and our centrist capitalism succeeds, then as we get to the middle of the term, it won't matter anyway. Because things will be going well enough to where the temporary good of any potential stimulus will pass. So it's a short term versus this is a short term versus long term choice. It there are people who play this game and make the short term choice and manage to uh, clear out any issues, which honestly takes is is its own kind of skill. I'll put it like that. Let me back myself up. But uh, for me, we're going to take the necessary hit here. It's not going to be popular. A couple of economic decisions I'll be making moving forward won't be popular. But the overall benefit to the economy will be clear. So we're going to send the plan back to Simon. We're not doing anything. Sorry, guys. <laughs> yeah. It's... It's harsh, but sometimes that's the reality of state economics. All right, let's meet with Karanti. 
We were heading to the meeting location set by Marcel Caranti. The motorcade was made up of the most confidential and trustworthy team. After a few hours of driving load along River Eskel, we took a turn before entering Conriad. The darkness started setting as we drove up to a hill. Where are we, Sergey? We're nearing the HOS Country Club, Mr. President. We'll be there shortly. We arrived and the big iron gates of the Country Club opened. It was huge and outright extravagant. The main building, inspired by lesbian architecture, was lit, was lit from all sides. It was rather chilly. I was approached by Peter Vector and Lucian Gallade. I hope the journey was comfortable. The location is very remote indeed. It's a very exclusive country club for people who value their privacy. We entered the main building. After opening the mar marble engraved wooden door, we were greeted by, greeted by two tall women. The receptionist led us to the meeting room upstairs. Marcel was standing by the window looking outside at the beautiful complex. He turned around to have a quick look at us both. He was a really handsome man with fair hair. He walked towards me with his hand and reached out for a handshake. I shook his hand. He had a firm grip. It is such a pleasure to meet you in person, Mr. Quanti. I appreciate your efforts to reach out for a mutually, mutually beneficial friendship. Huh, thanks for hosting us. I admired your father very much. May he rest in peace. Welcome. Your kind words have touched me, uh, Vice President. He was indeed a great man. Please, accept our condolences. We are saddened. He would have been very happy to hear this from you, Mr. President. It's time to look forward. Let's talk about our bright future. I have heard about your meteoric rise in HOS. I'm flattered. You truly are going to be the best president this country has seen. I say this because you have gone against the odds and survived. I expect that more than anything. <laughs> Politics is the ladder. I wonder where we got that line from. Thank you. Marcel gently pointed at the seas. We sat down around a gigantic table. Before speaking, he knocked on wood. The past months have been tumultuous, to say the least. I'm glad you and your family were unharmed in, sh in the shooting. At the shooting, excuse me. The whole incident must have been a shock for the kids. They aren't used, they aren't used to what we lived through back in the late 20s. I still remember when my father took us out of the country when it became too dangerous in Conrad. We can really spite him with that one, but nah. They were startled, but the important thing is that they are safe and sound. Of course, that is all that matters. No family should suffer from tragedy ever again. We had enough of that. Well, I am known to be a straightforward person, so let me get to the point without wasting your valuable time. It was during the Alfonso campaign when I was struck by what you had done within the party. Marcel started to look at one of the paintings on the wall. Let me be straightforward. So now I get to the damn point. I observed the painting. Like you could, you could just be a jackass. It really just allows you to go hog wild if you want to. Hog wild, now that's a reference that nobody's gonna get. The famous piece depicted a giant sleeping beneath beneath a ah. The famous piece depicted a giant sleeping beneath a village. The trees, rivers, and hills were all a part of the giant's body. His eyes were two caves looking up at the people. It showed daylight at the far left and nighttime at the far right. The giant seemed to be watching the village. It was totally unbeknownst to the villagers. Marcel pointed his finger at me. He said we will transform this nation, Mr. Raid. My conglomerate has a way of doing things and I don't want them to change. So, I want to cooperate with you. Please explain further. You might have the people's support now, Mr. President, but what happens when you make mistakes? Everyone, everybody makes mistakes. What's, what is that supposed to mean? Let's hear his point, Vice President. Being a president in this country means having many enemies. Enemies that will resort to anything to bring you down. Let's say these enemies cause a scandal or leak sensitive information from the administration. These would be destructive when they were released. If they were released. I see where you're getting at. You knew that a long time before you came here. You aren't just being nice, are you? 
I want two things, Mr. President. Number one is a guarantee from you that the Reign administration won't meddle in HOS affairs no matter what happens. Number two is a simple gentleman's favor for the future. Let me, provo let me prove my services to you first, and I'm sure you won't dis disprove, dis excuse me, disprove when the time comes. This is far too risky for me. Great risk means, means great reward. This, ah, man. <laughs> My tongue is betraying me right now. Let me try that again. Great risk means great reward. <laughs> this mutually beneficial cooperation will help you greatly. I can guarantee that you will see his benefits sooner rather than later. We can make history together if we dare to challenge the odds. So, yeah. He's basically offering to control the media for us in exchange for not getting in his way, which means that any legislation or proposals that we get to really to regulate or influence industries in the country, that will be the end of everything if we signed it. And number two, if we take this deal, we'll have to do something for him. Pat, you pat my back, I'll pack yours. Now, well, we'll go with Peter. You have been awfully silent, Peter. Peter leaned to my ears and whispers. I think he's getting more out of this than we are. The issue tied to his request must be so important for him that he's offering this risky deal. We need to be cautious. If we, can ca if we get caught or if this gets out, I can't imagine the consequences. Marcel interrupted us. So, do we have a deal? Now, with this particular deal, if you're pl like, if we took the deal with Tusk, or if we had any intentions to be inappropriate or corrupt in the future, like, now would be the time. Now would be the time to take the deal and say and cover our behinds because Martel will make sure that it won't get out. Another good re reason to take the deal is if we're planning to go full autocrat. Because as long as we don't touch Marcel, he'll make sure the people don't see our uh, takeover coming. But we are going to be centrist and capitalist. And since we're walking the straight and narrow, we don't need his deal. Mr. Caronte, I have to reject. Such a shame, Mr. President. And here I thought we were going to be good friends. It's a shame, really. Goodbye, Mr. Cronty. Let's leave. We left the complex and entered the car. I thought that would have ended better. Agreed. I'm sorry. I should have seen it coming. Yeah. Essentially, um, I think Lucian expected a more favorable deal. I'm sure that Saul had many favorable, favorable deals with the media and with Marcel's father. But that time has passed. We return to whole sword. So the negatives of that are going to be that Heart of Sword and media is going to be very negative to us going forward because we didn't take his deal and he's going to make us feel the pain of it. But we will we'll weather that too. The leader of NFP, Kazara Kibner, has demanded an emergency be called to address increasing political violence in the country. He said that without de a declaration of emergency, Solon would be destabilized and the integrity of the country would be damaged even further. He wants that to w so that we can enact emergency powers. We will not be doing that. No, sir. All right. Let's go ahead and t do this. Yeah. There they, they're the very good paragraph explaining why we should do it, but we don't need an explanation. We're going. <laughs> Dark clouds were looming over Dyer. They looked daunting as our convoy started approaching the century-old cemetery. It looked like it was going to rain. Certainly fitting weather for a funeral. As expected, Bernard Circus's passing maintained its media traction, and all of Sorland was paying attention to the ceremony, especially to what I would say in my speech today. Sir, 
We have arrived. Raindrops were running down the car window when Sergey opened my door and held an umbrella over my head. As soon as I got out, flashes from the cameras blinded me. So this is why I want a mini series of this game in particular. Like I can see this scene in my hand. My not my hand. My head. <laughs> like I said, my tongue is betraying me today. But I can see this scene in my head. I can't direct and I have no cinematography experience. But there is a way you shoot this where it's just very sad and very epic and you don't need a soundtrack and it's perfect. But I have no idea how. <laughs> like Lord, if I ever get a boatload of money, I'm buying the rights to Susan Rain so I can make a series of this. Just for this one scene. That's okay, Sergey. I will hold my old umbrella. As you wish, sir. He handed me the umbrella and started waiting next to the car with his own. Peter and Carl exited from their own cars in the convoy. They made their way over to me. And, Mr. President, I, I just wanted to inform you that the perimeter is clear and secure completely. There's no one getting in or out without our knowledge. Good work. Thank you, Carl. Carl bowed his head with respect. But yeah, this is like, it gives you so many options just to beat up on people, but if you are calm and rational, you're a much better and a much more respected leader. Good. If anything happens to Anton, you'll have to answer to the First Lady. And trust me, Carl, you don't want that. Peter let out a laugh, which drew some attention from bereaved attendees. Just, 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 I just did Peter to lower his voice a bit. <laughs> You're right. Sorry. <laughs> He's such a bro. <laughs> it, started, it started to rain. Several unintelligible voices were heard from Carl's radio. He stepped out to reply and returns shortly. We have a small problem, sir. A few, five to be exact, Red Youth members are here to attend a funeral. They apparently said they should pay their respects to their fallen comrade. Should we let them in? Do you think they pose a security, a security threat? No, they were thoroughly searched. It looks like they really are here to attend a funeral. Let them in, but put a few guards on them to be safe. As you command. Let's head over. They're about to start. I mean, I trust our, I trust our security forces to an extent, but especially with everything going on. Sorry, guys. We're going to watch you. Carefully. We walked towards the crowd circled around the grave. Everyone in attendance was wearing black in mourning. The rain started pouring heavily. Bernard's widow and daughter were in the front row, staring at the coffin with a mixture of disbelief, confusion, and above all, a cold, undergiving sadness. Both of their eyes were very red and swollen from weeping. Before taking my place to observe the ceremony, I gave my condolences to Bernard's, uh, Bernard's wife and his daughter who looked at me. She reminded me of Diana. When the religious ceremony was done, I was invited by the priest to deliver my speech. I took the podium. I felt like I had a lump in my throat. I couldn't get the daughter's eyes out of my head. Today we are mourning Bernard Circus, a father, a husband, and a loyal servant of this country. Towards the back of the crowd, I spotted the members of the Red Youth, wearing red shirts and black bands of mourning on their arms. They seemed ruly and were respectfully bowing their heads. There was complete silence except for the sound of raindrops. I will confess that I disagree with Brenda Circus almost entirely, but it doesn't mean that he deserved this. Our country can be a better place. Circus had a dream of a unified Swordland. In these next months, we need to fulfill his dream and band together. But hatred begets hatred. There's only one way to overcome this vicious cycle. We must unite against the evil of this world. I would now like to recite a part of one of the poems he left us. They're like, there are no wrong answers on this one, I believe, but I like that line best. We rise towards the sun. Those who died, died fighting. They are now buried in the sun. 
No need to mourn. There is a ray to the sun. A moment of silence, please. During the silence, all that was heard were the ravens. Some attendees started clapping, some crying. The coffin was lowered into the grave by the gravekeepers. After a couple of, couple of minutes, Bernard's surface was with the soil. No more. As we bid farewell to Bernard, I want to close with the words every sword lives by. I mourn not with core. Everyone replied, Victor sis da. Victory was close. With applauses, I stepped down from the podium. It was time to leave. The widow thanked me with a soft and defeated voice before we disappeared. On my way back to the car, I couldn't get the eye of Bernard's daughter, nor the faltering voice of his wife out of my head. Would Diana, Monica, and Fran look the same way if something happened to me? Peter put his hand on my shoulder. That was a good speech. I sensed only respect from his voice. Thank you. I mean it. I know you do. Come on. It's time to go. We've got work to do. He was right. We had work to do. So much more to do. I realized that the rain had stopped, and I looked up. The black, the black clouds slowly dispersed, and sunbeams enlightened our surroundings. As someone once said, even the darkest nights will end, and the sun will rise. Hope was still on the horizon. And that's why I would pay a million dollars to make this a TV show. I'm just saying. News coverage of the funeral. Huge crowds of mourners, including President Rain and other senior shortage officials, joined for a red display of unity, poured into the heart of Dyer today to bid farewell to Bernard Circus, the poet and a politician who was shot and killed at the gates of the Maroon Palace after Rain's inaugural ball. With hundreds of police officers in riot gear on duty and traffic barred on, the, on major thoroughfares, the normally chaotic section of the city took on a somber atmosphere. Malinia Vist anthems played from loudspeakers along Freedom Avenue as sort of citizens of various ethnicity, ethnicities stood shoulder to shoulder, many of them in tears. Others leaned out windows or over balcony railings to watch the procession. President Rain gave a unifying message to all Sortland by attending the, attending the funeral. He paid his respects to circus and met with his close relatives. Rain also made an emotional speech that touched thousands of attendees. He finished his speech with a quote from circus. We rise again, da, 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 da. So good coverage of that. <laughs> and we begin to see Marcel's revenge. <laughs> can't even he can't even wait till after the funeral. Bastard. President Rain drew criticism when he agreed to attend the funeral. Well, the decision is not totally out of ordinary. The fact that Rain is giving support to a known member of Red East who who promoted Malin Malin Malin. Malinievism. Malinievism. I will never get that right. Never with all I thought his party would be led by someone who stands together with a communist who study in the homeland of Malin Malinievism. So yeah, it's going to come in hard from the press now, but that's, like I said, well, that's what we're taking on. Nobody's going to, we're going to be unpopular for a little bit, but that's fine. We got foreign affairs up next. We're going to go ahead and take that briefing, and that may be it. At least for this stream. We'll see. Because I, we still haven't met the full cabinet yet. Like, we've, met, we've mostly been dealing with the security and economics team, which is the main thrust of our first term. But, like, this is our first time meeting with our foreign policy team, and we still have to meet with, like, the social affairs team. So we've still got work we need to do. The Blue Mansion and Lock event hosted us for the important diplomacy gathering. The door opened it, and David Weesey, once a lecturer to me, now the Minister of Foreign Affairs, gently made his way towards my desk. May I sit down, Mr. President? Leave the formalities aside, David. Please take a seat. <laughs> All right. I'm still getting used to your new position, Anton. He slowly sat down, taking care not to aggravate the arthritis in his knees. He always had an air gravitas about him, and the old age only served to deepen that. After he settled himself, he regarded me with delight, his blue eyes sparkling. <laughs> Look at you, Anton. The fourth president of Sortland. What a privilege for me. I still remember the first day you took my class at the Lockerbie School of Economics. Somehow, the inexplicable ebb and flow of life has led us here, to positions where we can change the course of history. Everything happened for a reason, David. It was meant to be. Maybe, maybe not. I don't believe in destiny, but sometimes it feels convenient to do so. He starts coughing again. It's time for longer. Would you like some tea or water? 
Oh, yes, please. Tea and water sounds nice. Thank you very much. He smiled. Maybe you brought two cups of tea along with a glass of water and placed them on the table. It seems you still remember how much I like tea. Nowadays, it really does wonders for my throat. So how's your wife Catherine doing? My lovely, my lovely Catherine is still as energetic as is as energetic as always. Age has hit me harder than her for sure. She still does her daily jobs, unlike me. Nothing can challenge time. Nothing. How's the Rain family? We are slowly starting to get used to the routine. As time passes, I realize it more. Family is the most important thing in life. We must take care of them. The door opened. Yosef and Lucian joined us for the briefing as the tall case clock hit the hour mark. Peter, however, was missing. I wonder if he was late to, from all the drinking he did at the party in Lockerfield. <laughs> Such a bro. But we'll talk more later, President Rain. Welcome, everyone. How's your travel to Lockerfield? A little bumpy due to some turbulence. I arrived via military cargo plane that landed at Lockerville International. Landed at Lockerville International. I would be a terrible actor. Jesus. I took the train. It was a little slow, but I can still recommend it for the beautiful landscape. I also had the possibility to work on a couple of things during the ride. From what I've heard, it'll be much faster in the near future when the L1 high-speed railway is finished. Exactly. It'll hopefully be one of our major achievements. Well then, since Mr. Victor doesn't seem to be coming today, I think we're ready to start. I will start by providing a brief overview, overview of our current, our current status with our neighbors. What would you like to start with? I'd like to hear about Agnolia. Our brotherly nation to the Northeast Agnolia they are still diplomatically non-aligned and probably has one of the more democratic systems between our neighbors. Economic stagnation is a worry for them. Their primary issue is the heavy reliance on foreign investment from us. Anolia is our most friendly neighbor. We have been allies for the longest time after Rumberg Annex Dome. In fact, this fact needs to be part of the equation. Unsurprisingly, the Anolian Prime Minister Martin, Martin Van Horten is expecting, is expecting better cooperation through a new fair trade deal with us. It's one of his election mandates. More comprehensive trade deal sounds beneficial to all sides. Both sides could gain from it, but Agnolia has more to win than us. They want to protect their weaker industries, which we are profiting from selling our goods to. Additionally, the latest numbers indicate that currently a million Agno sort of citizens live in, Agnan, in the Agnolan region of Sortland which creates a link between foreign policy and our internal affairs. These people have suffered socioeconomically, which led them to crime and other problems. In addition, our lax immigration policy was one of Agnoli's main requests, which is unacceptable. Most of the migrants in our country haven't been assimilated into Swedish culture. Adding more won't help. I'm supportive of relaxed immigration. I will rethink the matter seriously because it has great influence on our society and values. We should remember that we promised to keep our immigration laws relaxed in the election campaign. Yeah, like, I understand Yosef's, well, I understand what Yosef is saying because he's, he's a nationalist. But, <laughs> we made promises and I intend to keep them. I want to know more about Valsland. Our cousins of old across the Marquis and Sea wish to have a good relation wish to have good relations with us. As we all know, Valsland is a socialist republic, republic aligned with United Cantana. They are, an, they are an important regional player. It's also the most significant sea power in eastern Mercopa. We had hostile relations with them after several wars in the nineteenth century, which we wouldn't want to experience again. Recently the relationship has worn up thanks to Emmerich Hagel. As a result, diplomatic talks can be conducted in the future. It's not easy to forget about the great fire of Conrad. Thousands of lives were lost that day. Holding grudges about the past won't be a logical strategy if we are to focus on prag on a prag on I had it right the first time on pragmatic foreign policy. 
They haven't been in good relation with us for the past 200 years. Recently, they have also joined the Communist Cantana Security Pact, sub subjugating themselves to United Cantana. On top of that, territorial issues flared up between Agnoli and Vauxland because of the Helgeland, Hel because of the Helgeland Island. The Swedish Navy is very concerned with this volatile situation. Lucian looks slightly worried. Unfortunately, billion, billions of Swedish men worthy of cargo is transported close to Vog Vogtlandian maritime borders on the Marquian Sea and the Great Strait. This caused, signif this caused a significant risk to our imports and exports in, cause of, in, in the case of a deterioration of relations. This trade is of high strategic value to us. Ilsef, the Navy is keeping an eye on the situation from a distance, right? We are actively monitoring, monitoring the sea routes and cargo ships. For now, there's no immediate threat. But we don't know what can happen in the future. So, m another reason why I like the game. You look at the map, it makes perfect sense. If Vauxhall and, and Agnolia start fighting and we're trading with them, the only way we'll be able to trade safely with them is through land. And we, should, and we aren't doing the Ag Land project yet. So the safest way is by sea. And it's just not, <laughs> it's not, it's not reliable if they start fighting. Hint, 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 hint. So crossing that divide will be tricky, but one good thing is that usually in, this, in these situations, local regional matters uh, carry more weight than international ones. There is a way to get them both on our side, at least as far as trade goes. But we'll get to that when the situation comes up. What is the latest situation of Valen? It is tumultuous in the South, as always. Victor Smolak is expanding his powers among protests from Vezik's, pe from Vezik's people. However, he is quite positive about a normalization of relationships of relationship about a normalization of relationships between our countries. Reports indicate that they have been warming up to Kantan and international aid. As you know, Venice stability was always a concern for the region. But if we want to help them, we must not treat refugees like we did in the 30s. I still can't stomach the, I still can't stomach the inhumanity of those people suffered. I, not, I read it as written, but that's not right. I still can't stomach the inhumanity those people suffered. Why help such a disorganized state? I'm not sure what we can do about what we can do to help them. It does pose many risks, but we could ensure that we have more influence in the region by increasing our trade and border security. Our main goal should be to avoid a refugee crisis like the late 1920s. The Civil War had major security and economic repercussions on sort of soil. One of the demands of President Smolak was to tighten our immigration laws so the political refugees don't escape to Sorla. There has been a recent purge that pushed many Blutish to free to Bergia. It is definitely trouble. Roman outpost has regained its importance due to this. I'm sure you will remember that winter at the border outpost, Mr. President. You was right. I do remember that winter. I remember the despair in the refugees' eyes when we forcefully escorted them back to the Valen border. It is in our national interest to prevent the formation of a failed state on our western border. Wayland has been increasingly aligned itself towards... Wayland has... Valen has... Good lord. Valen has been increasingly aligning itself towards the Communist Alliance. Another port to analyze. Let's move on. Two important neighboring countries remain. Lesbia and Rumberg. Which would you like to hear about first? What about Lesbia? Our southern neighbor is aligning itself more and more with Arcadia. Lesbia is currently led by Prime Minister Pat Patricio Alvarez. They are the jewel of the continent and the second largest economy in Marcopa. Though wealthy, Lesbia suffers from excessive economic inequality. Our past relations have been great, but during the last decade, their investment to Swordland dwindled due to our instability. Allying with the richest regional nation could be beneficial. It could be, but it would also mean that we would draw closer to the Arcasia bloc and near the Arcasian Treaty Organization. I am certain that the, that the recession has a lot to do with the retraction of investments. Once they see that money is in, in the picture, they vanish rather quickly because they're capitalists. 
They have shown a selfish ad- attitude during the Valen Civil War by closing their borders and funding refugees to cross into Sortland. Lucian cleared his throat. The capitalism of Lesbia is inspirational to me. Look at their economic power. Everything comes at a cost. In Lesbia, the cost is wealth inequality. But business people are getting richer and richer. There are hundreds of very privileged oligarchs who invest inside and outside of Lesbia. Some made significant business, business investments in the cities of Benfi and Vulcan. What's the situation with Romberg? Nah, to the most troublesome nation. Romberg. A constitutional monarchy led by Queen Beatrice Livingston. I highly advise caution and calculated action against Rumberg. Our military must be prepared. The threat is real. They are strong and have the motivation as well as the means to damage us. We shouldn't give them any reason to pursue, ag- pursue aggression. We must prevent them from interfering in our affairs. They have shown similar behavior to their neighboring countries before, but we must be cautious. While Thornborough Thurnborough openly denies such claims. Their past and current actions make it clear they, that they want to destabilize us. The weapons caches found by our intelligence agency clearly shows what their goals are. Our military must be steadfast and our diplomacy valiant. Joseph looks stern and full of resolve. The rumber threat is one of our top priorities. You can be assured of that. We are always in dialogue with our Rumberg ambassador to make sure our channel is open to soft disputes. We could use their aggressive attitude against them by convincing the international community. Lucian grabbed the Lockheaven Times newspaper and put a finger on the article about the latest diplomatic incident. Their abrupt announcement about the closure of the Rumberg consulate in Lockheaven is yet another step in their escalation. This covers the overview of the current situation. We'll move on to our trade choice and their response to Rumberg's diplomatic escal- uh, escalation. The sun began to set over the hills surrounding Lockheaven. The team was ready to give advice as the new trade initiative and a response to the latest diplomatic incident in Bloomberg. Peter arrived late and a little rougher than usual. It, it must have been the drinking from last night. Hey there, folks. Excuse my delay. I'm sure I didn't miss anything we didn't already know. You were still supposed to be a part of this meeting. Also on time. Punctuality is important. We're talking about serious subjects here. Like, Peter, I'm sorry, but I'm going to have to come, like, he's a bro, but we'll, co- we'll cover from this time. Because it's just, because he's, he's our bro, but at the same time, dude, come on. Respect the cabinet. Peter was assigned a task for me. That's why he's, he's late, so let's move on. Uh, <clears throat> yes, yes. It was successfully, sir. Peter's tone was more, ser- more, more serious. Expect a report on your desk tomorrow. The vice president will be part of the trade delegation, so it's great to have input on that subject, but also on the Rumberg incident. There are two issues at hand. Which topic should we tackle first? We should address the diplomatic incident. Rumberg Council Sir Bron Harrington announced the closure of the 120-year-old consulate. Now the diplomatic staff is leaving the city to go back to Thunborough. He blamed the lack of security in Sortland due to the assassination and the subsequent protests. But it is obvious that they are making excuses. Bastards. First they close to Conslin and then they blame our security? The security situation is under control. They're playing with us. Isn't it telling when other countries are working with us while Rumberg is just cutting more time, ties with us? The neglect of President Alfonso and the chaos of the elections delayed our diplomatic efforts. Now that now there are only two Rumberg diplomatic missions left in Sortland. One is the consulate in Dyer, and the other is the embassy in Holsord. We are accustomed to the usual rhetoric, but this is far more serious. They're playing with fire. Look at what the Wayland destabil- <clears throat> look at what the Wayland destabilization has done to the region. Sortland breaking apart would tell Marco- breaking apart would tell Marcopa apart. In my entire career, I've never seen our Rumberg relations suffer this much. The previous, long po- the previous low point was the annexation of Dome. Joseph Lancio was furious. He barely kept himself from slamming the desk. 
They're worried. They're worried development for like the smuggled arms and the build up near the border. Our military must be buffed up to stand against a regional power like Rumberg. We'll either respond to this aggressive act with this diplomatic condemnation or we'll retaliate by closing our consulate and dome. I want to say that an escalation would be risky this early in our presidency. We should focus on creating a negative image of Rumberg in the international scene. The people of Sorland must be protected, no matter the cost. I say we respond equally. Now, pacify, like, I, again, I feel where Yosef is coming from. Bro, I understand. Like, I want to throw down too, but everybody else is literally right. It's far too early in the game, and we don't want to be seen as escalating the situation. Our best effort, especially before we do any sort of negotiation, is in keeping things calm, at least for now. And if we have to act, but if we have to act, we will. You better believe. We're an official diplomatic response condemning this unreasonable act. Declare that Rumberg aims to destabilize Sortland and the region. As you wish, Mr. President, I'll begin working by immediately informing the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Trade. Swaying the international, sea, international stage is the key in long-term strategy. I wish we had reacted more strongly. If we don't confront them, they will keep escalating the situation. I, on the other hand, am glad we are taking the more cautious road. So yeah, the majority of the cabinet are against it right now. They have to, like, the build-up is serious, but it's not serious enough yet. So if they do anything more serious, we will be there. Don't worry, man. I like, I'm listening to you, Yosef, but we can't act rashly. We should move on to the new trade initiative. Our primary goal will be to successfully sign a trade agreement with one of our smaller neighbors. We have two options with our trade initiative. Start off, start off negotiations with our old partner, Anolia, and forming a new cooperation with Wayland. Tell me about the trade deal with Agnolia. First off, the reason behind this option is more diplomatic than economic, although of course we can't forego the added economic value. Agnoli is an old ally and a valuable trade partner. The point we are at with early negotiations is around, around the steel trade. They are demanding that we buy their steel for a higher price. That is because they think that the deal is far too unbalanced as it, as it is. Their second demand is a privileged access to our agricultural market. If we are to fulfill their demands, in return they are offering a full alliance with, Sur with Swartland against Rumberg. Looking at the current advances of Rumberg near our borders, having a coalition against Rumberg will, pro will prove extremely useful. Obviously there will be consequences for entering a full alliance, mainly the issue around the Helgi Islands. Mainly the issues around the Helgi Islands. Vogtland has clear intentions on taking over the island one way or another, and entering a military alliance with Agnolia will make them furious. I want to state my support for the decision to stick to our old ally, Agnolia. Even though I disagree with their demand to relax immigration, we have cooperated with them on many issues in the past. There is obviously subjects that we still need to tackle, like our economies, to trade goods, and what to do with immigration. My opinion is that this is a good deal and we should go all for it. The new Agnolian Prime Minister is trying to improve the existing relationship. The downside is that we will need to make concessions, a reality of any trade deal. I will be open to, to creating a new agreement that would satisfy all sides. That would be the best outcome. If you decide that Anoli is a good option, another point is that they have a very democratic system. After the recent elections, the PM has a mandate to arrange a fair deal with us. Martin Van Horten is also is an avid supporter of relaxed immigration. Since we said we will keep immigration relaxed, it will help us. Regardless, if we are going to increase our regional influence to previous levels, we might need to make amends with our neighbors. Ultimately, the decision will be up to you, as always. Tell me about the trade deal with Valen. Dealing with a fractured country like Valen has its positives and its negatives. Although, although it will be lucrative in, in short term, there are risks associated with dealing with such a country. They're proposing co-investment projects and a no-tariff agreement. They're also offering oil in return for attracting foreign capital interests from Sortland. However, it is possible that there will be international ramifications of getting closer with a country like Valen. All in all, it's a very lucrative deal for us, however. Uh, all in all, this is a very lucrative deal for us. However, we need to think about the consequences. I certainly don't support the decision to become friendlier with Valen. We carried their burdens for decades. 
Their migrants flooded our country, and now they're expecting a deal from us. Maintaining influence in Valen could prove useful. Yes, it is risky, but think about influence when it, on an undeveloped region like that. We could also sell more products and enter their market easily. I am of the opinion that it's simply too risky. Yes, we regain resources and immediate capital, but I'm afraid of the consequences. You may be right. This ri it is risky. I tend to agree. If we wish to go forward with the deal, when the time comes, it is, when it, when we, ah, wow. If we wish to go forward with the deal, when the time comes, there is a topic of immigration to consider. Victor Smolak is a known isolationist. Our promise to keep our immigration policy relaxed will not help at all. He blames us for bringing Western interests to the region. He also doesn't want his political opponents to flee here. I personally don't like the idea of getting too close to Valen. Me too. Agreed. <laughs> the majority has spoken. I still think we should give it a try. Hmm. Our campaign promise to steer Thorland towards West and Arcasia, towards the West and Arcasia, will have an effect on the negotiations, especially with Valen. As you know, the current affairs of Valen are partly a result of United Cantana's support of Victor Smolak. This will be a problem, but definitely worth trying. As for Ignolia, this promise had made them cautious, uh, which might make it hard to get a good deal. We also need to consider the effects of our economic doctrine plan. The fact that we are heading towards a market economy will have an influence. Good negotiators optimize interests, which makes the difference between differences become trivial. Well, allow both sides to reach a deal. Very true, Mr. Vector. We have a lot of time to prepare for before the scheduled visit to Valen and, and before Valen and Agnolia. My tongue is not cooperating right now at all. I believe this gives a brief overview of our current options. Our trade delegation will begin t work towards the end of the year. We expect the vinyl negotiation and the signing to happen next year. I'm very much looking forward to visiting Stallport and Vaklavitz with party animals like David and Simon. <laughs> Peter laughed. Yosef narrowed his eyes and stared at him. Well, that concludes our meeting, Mr. Rain. Have a good day, and enjoy Lockman. I will take my leave then. Sir. Meeting concluded and the team dispersed. Our diplomatic action plan officially began. So, busy, busy, busy. That has been taken care of. And more than likely, if we can... The, the, economic, the economic interest of Agnolan and Agnolia are important to us, so we'll have to keep that in mind. But Anolia will definitely be at the top of the list here. Young Sword members claim links to government. A detained Young Sword member in Arvory claims that he has connections to the government. We have been investigating the truth of his claims, but we're not able to find any leads. Yep, corrupt. So the reports are backing Neil Morgan's case for um, action against corruption, at least. Let's... Holy, it's been an hour. We're going to put a pin in here. When we get back, we will take the briefing of the reform committee. And also, well, let's see what the headlines are before we call it, at least. Emergency in Enrica. Mayor announces troubling news are coming from the mayor of Enrica, who reported that a state of chaos exists in the city and called for called an emergency directive, authorizing him to use his security powers. So things are bad. In an announcement, Mayor Les said, We are reporting 20 police officers heavily wounded, two police stations burned down, and several shot. The city is in a state of emergency, and we are trying to restore order. Local gendarmerie began assisting the mayor after the emergency request was made. The armed units are now securing critical junctions and key infrastructure like power stations, hospitals, and the municipality building. Local NFP leaders have announced that they will assist the local enforcement with the task of keeping the streets safe by reporting violent dissenters. A statement criticized by the local PFJP official. Yeah. That's just not helping. <laughs> Welfare issues in Narble. Narble, a city once important, one, that was once an important trade stop for the Marquean Empire, has been in steep decline for the last decade. We have uncovered the hard truth from the residents themselves. K.A. 46, a shepherd living near the uh, Cavendier Mountains that did not wish to disclose his real names and made a shocking remarks about the city's and region's lack of health care services. He waited almost five months just to get an appointment in the rural region. Another re resident, a farmer, I.Y., 57, who also did not wish to disclose his name, is living near the outskirts 
of the Narbe of Narbel. His children AY fourteen and VY sixteen have to use dangerous mountain paths to walk to their school, located two kilometers away, even in the harsh recessions. So that's the warm up to our eventual our eventual meeting with our social affairs team, because as much as I would love to focus on the economy and foreign policy, we can't neglect our citizens. Unrest continues. The unrest in the streets is continuing and the tension between different groups have led to new clashes with hundreds wounded and sometimes several dead a week. Yeah, the situation is very bad. Our reporters have interviewed dozens of protest leaders from the regional capitals revealing different demands from the people. Three subjects stand out. Freedom of expression, democratic change, and economic security. On the other hand, many also went out to protest the worsened living conditions under the recession. Every third person our team had talked to mentioned the need for a, str a strengthening of the political system that needs to open up to reflect different opinions. Our eyes on the ground witnessed both peaceful and violent acts. We saw bus stations destroyed, shops burned, and people being carried to the hospital in ambulances. But there was also calm scenes where police forces allowed peaceful protesters from all sides of the political spectrum to make their voices heard and disperse. Certain cities like Enrique, Azaran, and Ivory are much more damaged by the unrest. The overall momentum of the protests don't seem likely to stop soon. I find a peaceful protest, but the political violence has to stop. It has to. We need democracy! I've long demanded the expansion of civil rights with reforms to modernize our nation. When the previous governments blamed the Supreme Court for not allowing reforms, the opposition was quick to point out the flaws within the Constitution and brought focus on reforming the government structures to open way for further civil reform. Now the reformists have increased in number, and with the president, who is seen as a simple change in office, we are waiting results. Whether it is the leader of the opposition or our current president, somebody has to break the cycle and rewrite the constitution made by Tarkin Saul, whose cult of personality has shaped our current divide, our current divide, divided national spirit, and must be broken. Will President, president Rand stand up to the establishment and listen to the people? We will see. Like, uh, you gotta love how, like, the lock of end times, wholesome posts, try to give straight news. Soylent today clearly now has an editorial bent because we ticked off Marcel. And the radical is just flourishingly editorial. Like, they do not care. Geopolitical, Soylent can just closure. So, yeah. So our efforts begin on that. So we will pick it up next time with a brief with our reform committee briefing. And then I believe we'll have a meeting with the social affairs team if I remember the path that I get the game correctly and a lot to do we got a lot done in this chapter at least so we still got a lot to do though I'd, i'm not covering for peter again so you better get it back together <laughs> leave a like if you're enjoying the series subscribe to the channel if you have not done so and check out vnsl.com that is vnsl.com where i promise you i will be gushing about suzerain again in a very new future just playing the game and reading the writing and everything about it just makes me excited for the game all over again so i'm sure I will have favorable coverage of it again very soon. See y'all in the next one.